Hello there, I'm Ellie, and today we're going to be talking about the volumes of cones and pyramids. If you're watching this video, you're familiar with the formulae for the volumes of cones and square pyramids. But how are these formulae derived? Well, today we're going to derive these formulae mathematically. Let's start with pyramids. Now, the formula for the volume of a square pyramid is one third b squared times h. Now, the pyramid that you're probably most familiar with is a right pyramid, where the vertex of the pyramid is directly above the center of the base, like this. To prove this formula, we're going to be using a different configuration of a square pyramid, where the vertex is directly above one of the corners of the base, like this. Now, it's not super apparent, but the vertex here is directly above this corner of the base. So, using this pyramid, we're going to prove the formula for a square pyramid. So, we have a few pyramids here in the same configuration as the one I showed last slide. So, we have one here, two, and three. All of these pyramids are the same shape and the same size, just in different orientations. So this first one has its base over here and its vertex over here. So its vertex is directly above this corner of our base. The second one has its base up here and its vertex over here. And this vertex is positioned above this corner. This third one has its base back here. And its vertex up here, which is positioned directly above this corner. So if we take these, here's one, here's two, and here's three. Now these three, as you can see, make a cube. And the dimensions of a cube, as you know, would be the same. So b times b times b. Therefore, the volume of this cube is b cubed. And since three of those pyramids, each the same size and the same shape, make up this cube with dimensions b times b times b, we can therefore say that the volume of a square pyramid with the height being the same as the side length of the base is one-third of the cube, or one-third b cubed. But what if we have a square pyramid with a height that is different than the side length of the base, b? Then we can use this cube to solve for that formula. So if we make the height of this cube some height h, then we know that the volume of this rectangular prism would be b times b, times h, right? But let's relate the volume of this original cube to the volume of this rectangular prism. So the volume of our cube is b times b times b. And we need to multiply this volume by some number to get this volume. So let's put that in an equation. b times b times b times some number x will equal b times b times h. Now these two b's will cancel out with these two b's by algebra. So we're dividing by b squared on both sides to get b times x equal h. Now to isolate x, we divide b on both sides and we get x is equal to h over b. So if we multiply this by this, we'll get this. Now, since the formula for a square pyramid is just the volume of a cube multiplied by a constant, one third, we can use the same concept for square pyramids. And so if we have a square pyramid with a height h and a base b squared, then 
we can multiply our volume here by the same factor because they will be related in the same way. And so we have one third b cubed times h over b. And so one b cancels out here and one b cancels out here. This becomes two and we get one third b squared h. So the formula for a square pyramid that has a height different than the side length of the base would be one third times b squared times h. Now you can see that this b squared times h is basically b times b times h, which is also equal to b squared times h. So technically this can apply to all sorts of rectangular prisms, which means this can apply to all sorts of rectangular pyramids. So if we have a rectangular prism with dimensions L times W times H, then we can say, according to this, that our square pyramids formula will be one third of that. So the formula for rectangular pyramids in general is one third times L times W times H. But what about a right pyramid? This still has the same dimensions as our configuration from before, b, b, and h here, but this doesn't exactly form a cube, does it? And we can see that we've moved the vertex from here to here, yet the same formula still applies. If we have a pyramid like this, then it still has the same volume as our pyramid from before, with the same dimensions, that is. How is that possible? Well, if we take our configuration from before and we divide this into a few slices of equal thickness, that is, okay, then we can move each of these slices so that this vertex here is in the center of the base. So it would look something like this. And I'm trying my best here, so if it's not perfectly in the center, then I'm sorry. Okay? But the edges are pretty rough here, aren't they? So if we divide this into more slices, then our edges would become smoother. If we had thinner slices. Right? So imagine we had an infinite amount of slices of an infinitesimally small width. Then we would get this smooth edge here, which means that we've essentially made this into a right pyramid, which means that this right pyramid and this configuration of a pyramid have the same volume. And since we can slide these slices, however much we want, that means that wherever the vertex is, it will always have the same volume as this if they have the same dimensions. So the formula would apply to this pyramid too. And consequently, all of the formulas that we established in the previous slide work here as well. So that is how the formula of a square pyramid or any rectangular pyramid is derived. Now let's move on to cones. Cones are a similar story. They also have that constant of one third, but our formula is one third pi r squared h, or one third the volume of a cylinder. Now again, we're familiar with a right cone, where the vertex is positioned directly over the base. Now you can see that I've enclosed this cone inside a square pyramid. So we're going to use our established formula for a square pyramid to find the volume of a cone. Now if we look at the base, we get this view. Now we can see that this is the diameter here. And this is the same length as the side length of the square. So this is also our diameter and this is also our diameter. 
but our diameter is equal to 2r, or 2 times the radius. So these two are also equal to 2 times the radius. Now if we find the areas of the circle and the square, we get that the circle's area is equal to pi r squared, while the square's area is equal to 2r times 2r, which is 2r squared, which is equal to 4r squared. Now if we find the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square, we get pi r squared over 4r squared. So these two cancel out and we are left with pi over 4 as our ratio. So if we take our formula from before, which is 1 third times b squared h, and we multiply this by pi over 4, then we get pi over 4 times 1 third. So b is 2r, so that's 2r squared, or once again, the area of our square times h, which is equal to pi over 4 times 1 third 4r squared times h, and these 4s cancel out, and we get pi over 3r squared h, which can also be written as 1 third pi r squared times h which is our formula for a cone. So there we have it. We've derived the formula for a cone, and we've derived the formula for a square pyramid and any rectangular pyramid. So that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.